is this Acevolt Camp Power 2000 worth even looking at? And if you're looking in a light cap category of solar generators, then yeah, this is actually one of the best units that I have tested so far and even found online that fits in that light cap category. If you're looking for something to run basic power needs either while camping or your fridge and maybe a freezer during a blackout, this actually might be the right solution for you. But we don't know that for sure until we get done with all of our normal tests. So we're going to put this unit to the test in this video to see if it will actually do everything that it advertises it can do and see if it'll work for you during an emergency or when you really need it the most. So stick around for this full review of the Ace Volt Camp Power 2000 solar generator. Now, luckily for you, I have a complete live updated comparison chart on all solar generators. I've made six different categories. That way we can compare apples to apples. Every category has a specification in which a solar generator has to be making or be able to do in order to be able to be in that category. This one is actually, even though it's pretty big, is in one of the smaller categories that I call light cap. So this is kind of in the middle to low end uh, of as far as size and capability because it's a light cap. But don't be mistaken, this has a lithium iron phosphate battery, 2000 watt inverter, 1997 watt hour battery. It's going to last thousands of cycles and so it's got a lot of great specs and I'm going to put those specs up here as well as a link to that comparison chart so that way you can compare this unit to any other solar generator of a similar size and then maybe from there be able to see maybe you need something a little bit bigger. Some of the other important specs is this has 3500 cycles on it. It does have an MPPT charge controller and that charge controller is rated to 500 watts of solar input and that solar input is 12 to 50 volts and 10 amp and that's probably the weakest point of this solar generator and with most solar generators honestly that is the biggest spot that solar generators fail is the solar rechargeability but one of the best things about this unit it is right now the best priced light cap solar generator on the market there is one other one that's nearly identical in specs and price and that is the alcatel p2001 and i'll be doing another video on that one but you can see how those two compare in the solar generator comparison chart but the other closest one to this as a competitor would be the EcoFlow Delta 1300. And just so you know that up front, the price right now is about $16.99. Really fairly priced for everything you're getting. You got a 12 volt DC cigarette lighter output as well as an XT60 12 volt 10 amp output right here, which is not a common thing to find. You got your normal 5521 barrel plugs here. You got four USB-A, two USB-C, Got a light on the front. On the side, we've got the charging ports. One of the nice things is that with the AC wall charging is it's just a cable. There's no brick on that cable. We've also got the solar input right here, which is just a typical Anderson power pole. And then on this side, we've got uh, all the outlets right here. It does not have an RV plug uh, and it can run the essential things of an RV. It can even run a microwave or a toaster, but nothing else at the same time, really. And I definitely wouldn't use this to run an RV refrigerator. It'll drain it super fast, but it does work pretty well. It will last all night long running a single refrigerator or even just a single freezer. And it'll last most of the night if you're running a fridge and a freezer and absolutely nothing else. And the best way to get that to work is to use an outlet timer. I'll have links for that down below as well. It's a way to make sure you're only running equipment when you want it to run. You actually select at what time you want the equipment to run off of it. The biggest question always comes down to the solar rechargeability is, can it be charged in a single day while still running that vital equipment? And with that, I'm not 100% sure on, and I am gonna be solar testing this, so stick around for that. There is a slight fan noise when it turns on. I wasn't sure if you were able to hear that. Uh, it, it generally does not run the fan. It's usually a pretty quiet system, and even the fans themselves are not very loud. This is at 100%, so we're gonna go ahead and do a 2000 watt draw. The reason we do this is to test to see if the inverter can actually handle that output as well as the C rate is going to be a 1C rate because it has basically a 2000 watt hour battery. We're going to be draining it at 2000 watts. We're going to see how well it can actually run that full load nonstop. Normally, in my experience, no one's ever doing this, but we do this to test the efficiency of the inverter when it's getting run its hardest. So let's jump right into it.
Okay, it just turned off right now and ran all the way to 0%. We know that if it runs for 60 minutes of an hour, that is 100% efficient, which is impossible to get out of an inverter. So all we have to do is do 46 minutes divided by 60 minutes, because that would have been 100%, right? And we get 76.66%. So at a 1C rate, that's not bad. It's definitely not amazing, but that's pretty typical for these inverters when they're running at full tilt. So it's just got a solid inverter that's gonna run nonstop. These other systems like my Energy Flex 1500 can't even do that. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool down and we'll take it outside and start charging it off solar. Now just to give you a quick view of what it's like to charge from the wall power, we're gonna do that real quick just so you can see the screen and how fast this charges. And then we'll do the solar. This is pretty incredible. It's got an 1100 watt wall charging speed. So it's gonna take about two hours to fully charge this up and you can run things while it's charging. It does have pass through power. Okay, so it's about noon right now and there are a few clouds, but the rest of the sky is perfectly blue. And so I'm hoping these clouds will move off soon. I've got two 210 watt panels here. And so the VOC on this is about 42 volts and the amps is around 11 amps. So the issue is that even though this is rated to 500 watts of solar input using these panels, I cannot actually reach 500 watts of solar input. So even if I were using 100 watt panels, I could not connect three in one group, three in another, and then parallel them in order to make 600 watts to try to max out that 500 watt input, simply because it'll be around 60 to 65 volts, and that would over volt the charge controller. So that's the biggest issue that I've seen so far with this, is I don't actually see a way of getting more than about 400 watts connected to the system. Uh, without damaging it. All right, so hopefully you can see the number there. I've got the whole unit covered by a box and the highest I've gotten so far is 380 watts. It could be fluctuating and just not able to see it, but it seems to be consistent around 380 and the clouds have pretty much all moved on. I'm going to go ahead and let this sit out here for a couple of hours and just see what kind of charge we get. So you can see pretty much have perfectly clear skies except for that tiny little cloud right there. So it's been exactly three hours. We're 51% charged, only 300 watts going in right now. Not as good a solar charging as I would hope. Basically what I expected from the beginning is that the solar charge controller wasn't gonna be very good. Ideally the MPPT should be about 800 watts. So that way this can be charged in a single day, especially while running something like a refrigerator. The fans are running at full tilt and it's really not that loud. It's still pretty warm from being outside. I had it underneath the cardboard box so that way it wasn't in the direct sun. So bottom line is the inverter is great, battery is great, solar input not great. Those are the three main factors to consider when looking at solar generators and 90% of the time solar generators will falter in one of those three categories making it something that I wouldn't normally recommend. So really, no matter what, this cannot be charged in a single day from 0% back to 100% while running something like a household refrigerator. Now, if this were running just a DC fridge and maybe an energy efficient laptop and maybe a fan, something small like that, like in a van life setup, but really it's gonna be stretching it at that point. So bottom line, this is very similar to the EcoFlow Delta 1300. It's basically identical to the Alcatel P2001. This and the Alcatel have basically the best bang for the buck over the EcoFlow Delta 1300. And I have found the Ace Volt customer service to be really good. So that's something to consider as well. But in the end, it's going to be limited in what I would recommend it for simply because it doesn't have fast solar recharge. And that means during an emergency when you've got no grid power or you're boondocking or off gridding in your van or whatever, it's just going to be really hard to get this to charge up if you drained it all the way down to zero. So that's it, everyone. The solar generator comparison chart I'll link down below. This is a light cap unit. You probably want to go up to the next level like a middle cap uh, if you're looking for any type of emergency preparedness. Email us at info at poweredportablesolar.com. We'll be happy to help you get something figured out. Thank you so much. Be prepared. Get some form of backup power. Honestly, the, the basic one that I recommend starting with is the EcoFlow Delta Max, and I have a review on that, as well as discounts on my website, poweredportablesolar.com. Be prepared. Get backup power. Make yourself ready for future blackouts. See you guys in the next video.